Hello and welcome to another object-oriented programming tutorial with C Sharp. In this tutorial, we will learn about how you can declare multiple instances of the same class and also how you can pass an instance of a class as a parameter to a static method. So for this purpose, we are coming back to our main method and I'll simply copy this instruction and I'm going to paste it. And I'm going to declare another instance called EMP2. Simple as that. This would allow me to instantiate, declare as well as instantiate two instances of the employed class. Now, instead of having a local method call to info, I will rather create a static method here, which will not return anything back, only for the display purpose, to which I will going to pass a string and an instance. So that's why I will going to declare a string message and an employee EMP. So every time I make a call to display, I will pass a string parameter and I will pass an instance of employee type, which will then be passed into the EMP instance of the employee type. So now inside the display method, EMP will represent whichever instance was passed in the call. So now this is where I will going to display sys, uh, console dot write message emp dot info so if i make a call to display and i pass a message first instance of employee type followed by emp1 so now the reference of emp1 will be passed into the body of emp next if i copy this and paste it. I'll say instead of first, second instance of employee type, and I'm going to call this EMP2. So now in this call, EMP will behave uh, on behalf of EMP2. So when I run it, I should get outputs for each of the instances that I've passed to the display method. As you can see over here, first instance, instance of employee type, now, since I did not leave a space after the word type, employee ID 100, which is actually coming from emp.info, and the reason both of them are coming on the same line is because of the write. And in the second case, I see second instance of employee type, and I see 100 again, because we have not changed the value of the instance attribute employee ID or ID number in for either of the two instances that's why it's giving you the same value for output because that's not the purpose of this example the purpose of this example was that how you can declare multiple instances of a class and how you can pass an instance to a method or an object to a method in our next tutorial we will learn a little bit more about how you can create what we call in c sharp a property the true definition of what exactly is a property. So what we have declared right now in, as the employee, inside the employee, we have an entity or a member called ID number. This member will then going to be uh, given to a property to handle, handle how it could be set or how it could be get. So that if you want to change the value of this member or if you want to retrieve the value of this member, then you will going to work with a property. So this is something different between C Sharp and Java. So Java developers need a little learning curve here because Java developers are so used to of declaring a member and then they considered it to be a property and then they write the getters and setters at separate methods which work on that member. But here you have a member property, two different things. Property basically deals with uh, setting or getting the member values. So anyway, there are some differences as all languages have. So here we have 
to learn about what exactly is a property and how do you set or get a value in a property. You can also do the same job with the help of setters and getters. However, C Sharp prefers that you do this with the help of a property. And then from there onwards, it becomes extremely simple for an instance of a class to then simply work with a property. If property is on the left hand side of an equals, it acts as a setter. If it's on the right hand side of equals, it acts as a getter. So it, it's another way uh, to make your life easy is basically what I call it. Anyway, in this tutorial, this is exactly what we wanted to do. And that's what we have done. In the next tutorial, we'll learn a little bit more about object-oriented programming in C-sharp. Catch you in the next tutorial. Have a great day.